Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. Man, I hope you're having the best day you have ever had in your whole life. Down here in Tennessee, it is hotter than the third layer of Hades, but we're still making it through it and everything's good. I am so thankful to get to be with you guys today. I'm sorry I hadn't done as many of these lately. We've had two shows and two weekends. We did the uh, Steve Sylvia, my buddy at North South Trader, uh, and Miss Nancy. Hi, Miss Nancy. We did their show at uh, outside of Richmond. Wonderful show, new facilities, great place. Felt safe when I walked in. Wasn't like the old joint. Uh, and we also did the one in Chattanooga with Butch and Anita Holcomb, uh, friends at American Digger Magazine. Great folks, great show. So thankful to be there. Uh, next year when they roll around, be sure you make it to both of those because they're worth the drive. Uh, but with that said, I wasn't able to do as many of these because it's uh, a long drive, getting back, getting everything unpacked, all the stuff that you guys have ordered while I was gone, getting that out. And like I've told you before, it's just me here, so I unpack, I pack, I ship, I do everything. Uh, I'm the, uh, and I'm a one row mule. If I try to do one, more than one thing at a time, it just don't happen. So I'm thankful to be with you guys today. We're gonna talk about a really neat gun uh, from the Civil War, one that the uh, Union cavalryman, you couldn't have a Spencer that shot those seven rounds in uh, consecutive. You wanted one of these. You wanted one of the good, well-built carbines that were made up north. This one was made in Stonington, Connecticut. Yep, Stonington, Connecticut. I love that word. I've uh, never been there yet, but one of these days I'm gonna make it and we're gonna check it out. It was made under the patent that was held by uh, B.F. Joslin, J-O-S-L-Y-N. And Joslin developed a breech-loading cavalry carbine, meaning that you didn't load through the muzzle like the early guns of, of the time frame. It loaded through the breech. And what you did, cock back the hammer, like this. This is called a latch. And what that does, once you put the cartridge in, this closes down, seals it off. And this uh, is very distinctive on a Joslin because it's huge and bulky. It's an odd kind of design, but these later models, there's two models. This is the 64. It worked a lot better than the early one. The early one just had a simple latch that goes over. This one actually has a knob like this that you pull out raise it up and allows you to load that cartridge in like this. Uh, <laughs> most of the guns of the day, they loved putting their name where you could see it from a mile away. Joslin, because this was his design, he put his stamp on the back of the latch itself. It looks like this. It's got his name and the patent dates on it. It says BF Joslin's patent, October 8th, 1861 and July 24th, 1862. Stamps it right on the back of it. And while we're talking about stamps, there's two stamps on these that you, there, let me take that back. There's three of these that you really want to see. You want to see the serial number in two places. They will stamp it on the top of the latch like this, and they will also stamp it on the tang, uh, which is the piece that holds the barrel onto the stock like this. This one's matching, 11,393. How many of them did they make all together? They made about 16,500 of them. The majority of them are this second model, later production. How do you tell them right off the bat? The later ones have the knob that we were talking about, as well as on the lock plate, it'll have this. It'll have the Joslin mark and 1864 date. So you look for those. Another way you can tell the uh, model 64 from the 62, right off the bat, just like that. The early ones are brass mounted. These are iron mounted, meaning they have a iron butt plate, iron trigger guard, and iron barrel band, single barrel band on these. So this one, full length barrel, 22 inches, fires a rim fire cartridge, fires basically a Spencer cartridge that's 52 caliber. They uh, were quick to load. You didn't have to use a ramrod. You didn't have to use anything. Just open that latch, load that uh, bullet, load, load that cartridge, and then you're ready for business. Um, most of these that you see, I didn't let the hammer down. Most of these that you see are broken, mismatched numbers because that latch wasn't a great design uh, and they wore out quick. So a lot of times those numbers have been uh, 
or mismatched because they replaced it. This one's got the right ones. Stock's really pretty. Opposite of the stock, you have this stamp. It is the cartouche like we've talked about where it was approved by military service. Why is it important on these? Because the second model they made 12,500 of. 8,000 of them were bought by the government. This stamp lets us know that it's one of the 8,000 that was bought by the U.S. government for uh, use by the soldiers. A lot of regiments were issued these guns. Of the ones that we know, we know the 4th and 9th Indiana, the 19th New York. There were also smaller regiments from Tennessee, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Wisconsin, um, several others that were issued these guns. I actually hunted a camp one time with a metal detector. I think it was outside of Winchester, and we dug uh, some parts to some of these. So it was kind of neat. Uh, they did get issued, they did get used, uh, but I digress. Of those 12,500 of this model, 4,500 of them were sold privately because uh, if you couldn't get that government contract, a lot of the pretty neat, unique guns were sold by some of the famous retailers. There's a really cool catalog that was issued in 18, issued, that was sold out of in 1864 by Schuyler Hartley and Graham in New York City. And in that catalog, he's offering these guns. And they're so distinctive, you know them from a mile away. But he sold 45, or he sold some of them. He sold some of the 4,500 that were privately sold during the war. So it does make a difference when you see that cartouche. That way you know this one is a military. It had a chance to go to those guys from Indiana, Tennessee, uh, New York. It, it has the shot of being issued to those guys. This one, boy, it's pretty from front to back, top to bottom, side to side. And right now you can go to ShilohRelics.com. You can see it. You can see its cousins. Man, I bought a truckload of stuff. I am broke as a wedge, but I sure got some nice relics coming your way. I've still got some stuff from the Matt Woodburn collection. Uh, I've still got a lot of stuff. I got a bunch of guns, a bunch of swords. Uh, you better be watching that site closely because it's going to have some cool stuff on it in the next little bit. I hope that you guys are well. Uh, I've had a, a big, uh, I made a big decision a couple days ago that... Uh, I'll tell you more about later on. I'm not going to be returning to Antiques Roadshow right now. Uh, I did it for 20 years. This would have been my 20th. Well, I did it for 19 years. This would have been my 20th year. Uh, I, I just didn't feel like it was the right fit for me anymore. But I want to say thank you for all of you guys that took the time to watch uh, Antiques Roadshow and, and, and say the nice comments over the years. It's been a wonderful part of my life. It has been a tremendous thing. I have made some of the best friends I've ever had in my life because of that show. And I've, it, it has been a wonderful time in my life. Uh, and I just want you guys to know that I appreciate it. This gives me more of a platform of being me. I can say my opinions. I can share with you my opinions, and that's what they are, opinions. I can share with you the history as I know it. I can share it without editors, without uh, being bound uh, by other people's thoughts. So I am thankful that YouTube has come along. I'm thankful that you guys take the time to watch these videos. Please share them, because uh, this is my outlet from now on until something breaks loose. So I hope you share these. I hope you enjoy them. If you've got something that you want to see, go on to shallowrelics.com. Look around the website. If there's something there and you're like, man, I'd like to know more about that, email me. Text me. Or text me, email me. Uh, hell, send up smoke signals. And if I can get it and I can tell you a little bit more about it and make it interesting for you, I'll do it because this is, I enjoy this. I get to share with you my passion, my love of Civil War history, and I'm not getting rid of history. I am going to share it with you guys as long as there's breath in these lungs, and I can do it. I love you guys, and I'll catch you next time.